Hello, so I saw this dress available in Urban Outfitters sales section and I immediately knew that it would be perfect for another one of my dupe videos. I knew that I could make this even cheaper than certainly the 130, 140, maybe full price, and even the $40 sale price, and also make a couple of style changes because I like this design, but there's a couple of things that would make it a bit more to my personal taste. I wanted to try an open back style for a while and running across this design it just tempted me to actually attempt it. I also recreated a free people dress a few months ago and that one I did with thrifted fabric. So in my opinion, that makes it a perfect dupe to actually use more sustainable fabric, but we do the best we can. I've been looking for a similar fabric at the thrift store for a while now and just haven't come across anything. And then one day I was in Costco and I came across by accident, a, a pretty similar pattern and color to the original design. And it looks like this. So um, when I picked this up, I thought it was cotton, which would have been silly because I do think it's hard to get cotton sheets for $15. <laughs> I thought it was like fate. I don't know. Right before I started filming, I read 50% GRS recycled polyester. And I was like, polyester, 100% polyester microfiber. Because cotton is not like a good fiber for the world, but you know, most bed sheets are made out of cotton just cause it's like nice. I'm sure that microfiber is great for the world, <laughs> but hey, it is 50% recycled. But uh, let's get started. So as you can see, I'm using another free pattern from Mood, which was this pattern. I thought it was the perfect starting point, but I will say the fit of this dress is a bit weird for my body type. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking of downloading this pattern. I got all these pieces out in my recommended size, started putting them together, and quickly realized every piece fit weird or too small. So I went another size up and put those together, but they were a bit big, so I had to make some extra adjustments. Thank goodness I had double the amount of fabric I needed. You'll see more about this later on, but I just wanted to give you a heads up now. For the skirt, as always, I used my trusty A-line skirt pattern I always use.
The first step was to sew the bust darts on the bodice. I then put the front and back bodice pieces together. Now since this was polyester, I knew this wasn't going to be breathable, so I didn't want to add a lining layer, but instead I hemmed the bottom edge to give it a finished look. So I'd already redone the bodice, as I mentioned earlier, but this is where I realized I also needed to make larger sleeves as well. Instead of making a channel for the top of the sleeve like I did last time, I wanted a small ruffle at the shoulder, so I hemmed the top of the sleeve first. Before placing the sleeves, I wanted to make sure my neckline looked correct and I ended up having a lot more space than I thought, but I'm learning to give my future self options for changing my projects, so I left extra fabric and just turned it over a couple of inches. Then I put the sleeve into the arm's eye, which was really a half arm's eye. Since I wanted a small ruffle, I inset the elastic an inch from the finished edge on the top half of the sleeve so that the excess fabric would naturally create a ruffle as I stretched the elastic. I did a zigzag stitch over the elastic to give extra stability to the stitching.
So I was not feeling like making fabric buttons this time. Sometimes depending on the fabric, they're more work than they're worth. So instead I went through my button stash and looked for somewhat matching buttons. Most of them were closed, but not quite right or didn't have a matching button. but eventually I found a couple of options, settling on the white pair. I ended up needing a third button later on, and that one is not a perfect match, but whatever, not the worst thing in the world. I added elastic to one side of the back pieces to loop around the buttons. This ended up being a bit too thin, and I actually used a black hair tie later on, which worked pretty well. Okay, so onto the skirt. One thing though, I was looking at my inspiration photos just to make sure that everything looked as similar as I wanted it to look. <laughs> and I realized that only one side is open and the other side is closed, which first of all, I don't like that look. And second of all, I just think it would make the silhouette really strange. And I wonder if that's why they kind of hit it. And I wonder if that's why it was on sale. So I'm gonna keep both sides open. I like a little symmetry with this look. For the dropped waist that I see, I would definitely need to add some kind of zipper if I wanted to make it very fitted the way that they do, but I'm gonna do the thing that I always do, which is shirring. That way I don't have to do any enclosure and I can just slip this dress on and off. It's so easy. I'm sorry if you're tired of me talking about shirring. Uh, I feel kind of culty when I talk about it now just cause I do it every single time. I have a couple of pieces that I've bought that have a sure drop waist and they also add like a thicker elastic at the top. I'm gonna do that as well. I guess that just makes it stay a little bit better, adds a little of stability. So we're gonna get to that and then we're gonna finish all the things with the top, hem it, and then it'll be done. Let's go. So I started by making a channel for the thin elastic, which is basically the same as hemming in this case, but I left an opening of about a couple inches to slip the elastic through. And then I attached a pin to the end so I could push it through the channel. Once it was through, I attached both ends of the elastic and closed the opening I'd left. It was then time for the shirring. My first line I started was about a half inch down from the elastic seam and kept spiraling down until about halfway down my hip line. After that, it was time to try it on. I immediately noticed how cute this would look as a dress, which gives me an idea for a future project. But for now, I just made sure it looked good as a skirt and the lines of shirring ended at the right spot. It was then time to attach the top of the skirt to the bottom of the front bodice. I then stitched the buttons on the other side of the back bodice. And the last step of course was to hem the skirt. And now 
now it's time to show you the final result. And that is the dress. A um, couple of notes. I think that if you have a similar body type to me, I just want you guys to know that you should be prepared to um, have a lot of fit changes that you need to make. Not only did I have to size up another size, even though I went off of my body measurements, it could have just been that my proportions don't really go with the pattern proportions, who knows. But also I ended up having to add another dart right here. And and a dart at the back as well. I just got it to a point where I was like, it's good enough, it's fine. I think I like it, fine. I don't know if I can do open back with how short my torso is, but I think it's cute. I do feel the need to kind of pull it down a lot. <laughs> it does kind of give me the confidence to try a dress that I've been wanting to try for a while, which is one where it has an open-ish back, but it ties in a bow as well. If I have any examples, I'll pop them up here, but it's basically just like an open back. It doesn't open here as well. I think we'll try that semi soon. That is gonna be it for me this week. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to like and subscribe and comment. All those things really help me out. And uh, I hope to see you back here next time. Bye.